Okay, here we go. Hey guys. Hi everyone for joining us this evening. Um, myself, John, um, Ben, and our new co-lead healing. And we are really excited to be running the third edition of the Singapore B2C Marketers Group um, community meetup. And although this is a virtual one, uh, we still aim to um, engage and network as much as we can um, with fellow Salesforce Marketing Cloud users in the community. So unfortunately, um, the pandemic has caused some disruption to our plans. But today, as we try and navigate the new normal, we are happy to be having Nathan and Kumaresh from Noasis here also, um, presenting on customer onboarding and early life stimulation. So, um, Ben, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Ben, and uh, I'm one of the co-leads of the Singapore B2C Marketers Trailblazer Community Group. And um, on behalf of John and Elaine, I'd like to welcome all of you tonight to our first virtual meetup. As uh, John mentioned, it's our third meetup. Unfortunately, we've had to do a, a virtual uh, meetup this time. We would have liked to do a physical face-to-face -face meetup. In fact, this session uh, is long overdue. We were meant to do it in, in Feb, I believe. Uh, unfortunately, you know, come to this, but uh, you know, we did that. Um, but yeah, happy to have you all on board um, this evening. And I uh, hope you guys learned something new or you know, learn more about uh, Noasis, what they have to offer. Uh, and uh, yeah. Back to you, John. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so to familiar faces, Naomi and Norman, thank you for not forgetting us in this period. And, <laughs> and to uh, new, new attendees, Eugene, Tristy, and Shibu from Malaysia. I'm one of the co-leaders of this group, and I started this group alongside Ben, um, more so in the capacity of a Salesforce end user whereas uh, Ben is more uh, on the technical expertise side of things, um, with a broad intent of bringing together um, SFMC users for knowledge sharing and networking. And today, additionally, I'd like to uh, get everyone to put their hands together to introduce our newest co-leader, uh, Yiling. So Yiling, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, John. So hi, everyone. I'm Yiling. I'm very excited to be a part of this team to join on board the Singapore B2C Marketers Trailblazer Community Group as the new co-lead together with Ben and John. So I'm, I still source a bit of us like join this call, Love Salesforce, it's a great ecosystem. So I'm really looking forward to um, see all of you and even more of our friends and colleagues in the industry to in our future meetups so like we can all work together to build a great experience learning about um, B2C marketing and especially Salesforce. So I look forward to having all of you and really excited to create more opportunities for all of us here. So, um, yeah, so, so today, as John has mentioned, we're having our first virtual meetup and invited our speaker, Nathan from Noesis. So today is the online call. We will have a very simple agenda. So first, we have started off with our greetings introduction that's already done by the team. So next, after, um, after this introduction, we'll be inviting our speaker, Naden from Noesis. So he'll be presenting primarily on customer onboarding and early life stimulation using the Noesis Apollo product and how it integrates with Journey Builder. So I would like all of you to also stay until the end of the session because we do have a surprise for you. We have a quiz and of course it comes with prizes. So we'd like all of you to take part in this quiz. It'll be simple and be fun. So you take part in the quiz, win, um, be the fastest to answer it correctly and you get to win a prize. And after that, um, it'll be around for 10 minutes and we have a wrap up session after that. Yep, so now I'd like to present to you our very special speaker, Nader, who has um, gladly joined our session today. So thank you, Nader, for accepting the invite to present today. So um, Nader, 
the screen. Yeah, so Nader, yeah. he's from Thanks. Noesis, and he'll be presenting on how organizations can drive the best-in-class customer onboarding with Apollo. It's a solution available on the Salesforce app exchange that seamlessly extends marketing cloud functionalities to help marketers optimize on how to engage customers at the right moment to enable real-time personalized proactive customer engagement. So now I'll pass on the time to Nathan to elaborate more on the product. Nathan, please. Thanks, Yilin, okay. and good evening, everyone. Hopefully, taken, you can all see the screen okay. Um, yeah, so we don't have a huge amount of time. So the, the objective really was to um, provide an introduction of uh, how we can add additional functionality natively within um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud and particular Journey Builder. Um, using the theme tonight, which we'll focus on around a customer onboarding and early life stimulation. And we were going to do that using a, a sort of a, an industry theme around retail credit card, just to give some industry context to it. Um, but yeah, hopefully at least it gives a flavor of what we're trying to do, how it adds value, how other clients are, are benefiting, I guess. Okay, so with that very simple agenda as well for this part, um, just going to go through a few slides at the beginning to introduce the concept. Uh, mostly what we wanted to do was really focus on uh, showing you actually in uh, Marketing Cloud with some demos and go through the different sort of some scenario use cases and go through the different features and how we've enabled those within Jetty Builder. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I'll be doing the first part and then I'll be handing over to Kumresh and he'll be taking you through the demo and I'll sort of be chiming in with some of the use case comments. Okay. So just to start with, first of all, what is Apollo? Um, it was really built Maybe looking at- It's not square. I'm not sure, am I getting the one or everybody getting the same thing? It's not, some of your screen's going off. <laughs> mm. Sorry, it looks okay. Can else see the screen okay? Yeah, I can see the main screen. That looks all right. Okay. Um, yeah, so why did we, why did we build Apollo? It was really for, um, uh, for situations where customers wanted or had lots of different disparate data sources. They weren't just going to do a daily extract from a data warehouse and FTP it up to Marketing Cloud. And maybe there's some, you know, certain data, data source which they wanted to get near real-time data or more frequent data from a Kafka stream, for example, or a web service stream. Um, be able to aggregate data streams into one place and manage what data goes to Marketing Cloud on a, on a scheduled basis. Uh, so Apollo basically sort of acts as that sort of central um, repository for doing that, and particularly for customers or large enterprise clients that have a lot of data on-premise, um, because Apollo can be deployed either on-premise or in a private cloud environment, depending on where our clients um, choose to manage the data that we're, we're um, holding. Um, and then as we're holding data and processing it, then, then Apollo can also trigger, um, using rules, events into, um, into Journey Builder as well. Um, and then we looked at, okay, other areas where um, clients that might have been using more traditional marketing automation platforms, um, whether it was uh, HCL Unica or IBM Unica as it used to be, uh, SaaS or Adobe Classic, and what type of features might they expect to have if they were going to migrate to a marketing cloud platform? And so what we looked at was, okay, what are those features that they, they may see is a bit lacking and, and how do we enable those then within uh, marketing cloud? So that's really what the premise of how we went about building Apollo. Um, so as I mentioned, it can be deployed on premise or on any cloud. We have clients that are running both in their own data centers and some that one's running on AWS, another one running on Azure. Um, the user interface that we've developed uh, works natively with a, embedded within SFMC, as you're gonna see shortly, both within Journey Builder and then separately in Admin Portal. Um, as I talked about, you can unify data from multiple different streams from multiple different data protocols very easily, um, even manage the ETL on that, and, and basically set up an in-memory customer data mart for, for customers in a NoSQL um, data store. Um, so every customer will end up with a JSON document, which is holding all the attributes associated with them for which we can trigger off or send up to Marketing Cloud. Um, yeah, and it provides a way of um, enabling trigger-based or real-time journeys and journey initiation into Marketing Cloud through triggers. 
And uh, today, yeah, three key clients using the platform, PTT in Thailand, Telstra in Australia, and Vault Bank in Australia. Um, so just, just a little bit of what it is and what it's not. Um, it's designed for handling massive data volumes. Um, largest clients we have using the platform uh, have 100 million customers. Um, and then the largest in terms of data volume is uh, 13 billion records a day. Um, you get a real-time data mart with it. You can run real-time segmentation for the data that's flowing into the platform as well, from which you can schedule audiences to any other system or directly to Marketing Cloud. Uh, there's the real-time complex event processing for the triggers. Um, if, if a client, which we'll show an example of this later, if, if a client has uh, a lot of potential offers or actions that they want to sort within at the moment within a journey or when we trigger trigger an event and you want and the client has their own sort of data science team they want to use their own analytical models for sorting those hundreds or thousands of potential outcomes then Apollo can be used as an execution engine for sorting those um, offers using predictive or MBO models in real time um, we can support geofencing using not only mobile SDK data, but like if it's a bank, for example, all of the um, ATM transactions, for example. Um, if it's a retailer that's offering in-store Wi-Fi, we can use the Wi-Fi access points for the geofencing. And in telco, generally what we're using is all the um, uh, CDRs and uh, data, data XDR records for the geofencing as well. Um, something that's a bit different to what you would normally expect in marketing cloud is the ability to uh, run uh, conditional offer monitoring. So this is the ability to set a challenge to a customer, monitor, did they do what we asked them and then fulfill um, that, whether it's loyalty points, coupons, vouchers, or direct products. Um, often what we get asked is, you know, does this replace, you know, my traditional customer data marts on your EDW? No, it's not. Um, we, we would take that as a data source and we're also gonna be a data target back. Um, Apollo is really designed for holding Key, key attributes that really, really needs for making real-time decisions. Um, and it also does not provide an environment to design and test analytical models. Those still will be built off your traditional BI or analytics environment using tools, whether it's SPSS, SAS, R, Python, et cetera. And again, Apollo is just providing an environment for execution if you want to execute those models in a real-time situation. So what are the primary reasons when uh, someone might consider Apollo for SFMC? From business side, it's generally, you know, want to initiate customer engagement by automatically identifying events of interest, or there's a requirement for having complex contact policy management. I want to control the number of contacts by channels and categories. Or we want to implement next best offer decision making um, in, in, in the moment within journeys. Uh, or I, want, I would like to have visibility of key segments on a real-time basis as we're processing data. Okay. And then from the IT perspective, often with larger enterprise clients, particularly banks and telcos, uh, wanting to keep PII data on-premise or in my own cloud environment, so how, how do I find a solution to manage that? Um, we've got lots of different disparate data sources coming in different formats, different protocols that want centralizing and managing before um, sending to SFMC. And if I, you know, my CMO is asking me to enable offers and automate the fulfillment process to backend systems, how do I automate the monitoring of that and the actual fulfillment and orchestrate it? Um, so these are these are the problem statements I guess Apollo is addressing. Um, and then what you're going to see in the demo, there's uh, there's two two parts to what we're providing. One is the out of the box activities, which are available for inserting into journeys within within Marketing Cloud, Journey Builder. And then there's an admin console, again, access through SFMC to, uh, to manage the templates, the data ingestion, the data, customer data mart, et cetera. And Kumar is gonna take you through this in a minute. Um, so just before I hand over to Kumar, I'm just gonna go through a couple of slides and then we'll bring up the demo. So just to provide a bit of context, we just create a fictitious customer and a fictitious bank. Uh, so the Smarter Bank, we've got Jane, um, she's just completed her application for a TSB Points Plus uh, credit card. It's been approved. The digital native, she expects her bank to understand who she is and engage her in a relevant, timely and contextual manner. And so the first, so we're going to go through three or four journeys. Um, the first one is, you know, is the card's just been posted. 
Um, so just the only, so we've highlighted here what the you know, standard SFMC functions are on the light blue and where Apollo plays a role in each of these scenarios. So most of this first journey is, is very much just standard SFMC, as I'm sure you're all very familiar with. So we just want a batch segment executed daily, probably of who, who have had cards posted, send them a welcome EDM, maybe wait 14 days. Um, but after 14 days, we want to actually check um, who's, um, who's actually activated the card or not. Um, and, and, and we want to do that on a real-time basis. We don't want a T minus one sort of delay. Um, so what Apollo provides you is an API um, to check attributes that have been managed on a real-time basis from data streams. Um, so within the journey, instead of using the standard um, SFMC decision split, you can use Apollo split, which will call the API to get the, the details on the specific attribute we're interested in. In this case, who has activated the card. Um, if they haven't activated, then we want to send a SMS reminder to the customer about activation and how they can do so. Okay. Um, following on from that, um, we, we detect and we're watching for a, um, card activation events. So J Jane has just uh, completed the activation of the card. Immediately after um, detecting that, uh, we want to set a conditional offer. So this will be using a Apollo offer this time instead of a Apollo event. Um, and the challenge that we're setting forth here is spend greater than or equal to $500 in the next 30 days and get a $10 Starbucks voucher. So the first thing is to set what we're going to challenge this customer to, in this case, spend 500, and then what, what, how long we're going to monitor that for 30 days. And then as soon as that spend 500 is achieved, trigger and provision the $10 Starbucks voucher. So, that, so we get the event, we start the monitoring. Now, once we've set the monitoring condition and it's been established, then the next stage in the journey is to send the communication to the customer once we're already monitoring them. This can go out via app push in this case and EDM. And then as soon as they, they achieve the fulfillment would automatically happen by Apollo conditional offer. And then the last part, which is the way SFMC Journey Builder works, we actually need a separate journey. So we'll have another event that's running looking for um, fulfillments. Um, of, of particular offers, and, and then we, in this case, we want to send a notification uh, with the with the voucher to the customer. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have Commerce now uh, run through these two scenarios, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about the the others that we've got later on. So with that, Commerce, I'm going to hand over to you. Okay, let me share my screen. So sharing good. Yep. Okay, excellent. And just for those yes. on the call, if you, if you want to put any questions into the chat as we go, happy to watch that and take take them at relevant, suitable times. I'm just figuring out how to remove this from my top of my... Okay, so let me start uh, this uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. We, uh, the activities of which we have built is built part of Journey Builder, right? So if you're going to Journey Builder, Let me just click a new journey. So on the left hand side, you'll see all the standard activities. And if you have Apollo turned on, part of the activities, you actually get all these Apollo activities in, in the journey. And the, the idea is you can just basically drag, say, a detect extension, and you can just drag any of the Apollo activities in here, and then configure as how you configure seamlessly as how you configure natively in journey builder right so the idea is the activities of apollo it's basically use journey builder to, to configure them uh, in the use case later i'll show each one of it what's is contained and to configure the attributes in these particular activities we actually have an admin portal so again if i go back to the salesforce main portal app exchange click on this it's the Apollo admin. Then you get the admin portal. And if you look at the events, all the activities are here. So all these are tempor templatized. So it's just templates that you can create and configure. And similarly for all the activities, say the events, the offers, the policies, uh, data configuration, is all done from the admin console. 
So if I go back uh, to the first use case, looking at this card posted, let me go back to my journey. This is my journey I created. Right. So you have a data extension. It's basically a schedule to pick up whichever card that you have kind of sent across. The next day we send out the welcome EDM. Before I send out EDM, one thing you want to do, you have contact policy. So in this example, you don't need to enforce it, but you want to log it. The key is because if you have multiple journeys, you can actually have a global contact policy across all the journeys, right? So to configure a policy, basically you have a policy activity in here. Just drag this for the journey and click on it. Then basically you have option, do you want to kind of apply a policy or you want to bypass a policy? For in this case, because everybody should get the welcome email, I'm going to bypass the contact policy. Then you can option, do you want to log it or not? Because if it's log it, then it'll part of one contact sent to the customer that particular day. So I can log this with a policy. For this example, you don't need a control group. And you say, okay, this is going to be a communication only. And then policy summary view. And my policy is set up in here, right? So basically I have set up a policy for this backlink journey. If I go back to the backend, Basically, you'll have a policy. This is the admin console. You have the policy in here. You go with policy. And in this configuration here, you basically set the policy saying that in a particular day, how many contacts you want to send in a week, in a month. I go down some more. You can say per channel, how many contacts by SMS, email, push. You can, if you add more channels, basically, whatever channels configured, you can add it in the admin. And then you can. Have, Interval, window intervals. I also can say that contact window, inter contact window interval, you can say that basically I'm gonna send SMS, two SMS per day, but I want minimum three hour gaps between the SMS. And you can have regency of business unit, basically a different type of communication across. You can set that parameter to how many for notification only, how many for retention. And then you can also have cool down period set up part of the policy. So that is basically what this particular activity provides. Basically, it comes to enforce a policy for a journey and also enforce a contact policy across all the journeys. Then you've sent an EDM out, you wait for 14 days, and as the marketing clock is 14 days, the next morning you start sending out. So assuming you have, say, 10,000 reminders going out, you want to make sure and check that which particular customers has been activated so you don't want to send a reminder. But because journey works in a day of data, you want to check the current status. This is where it comes in. It, sorry, it works very similar to decision split. The only difference is it checks on real-time data. Come back. Yeah. Similar kind of configuration. The only difference is Apollo split checks on actual customer data as real time as possible. Right. Done, then whichever customers which is not activated, we send a reminder, whichever none, then it goes through, right? So basically, it's two activities which are used for, for this journey. And once the card is shipped, then you have activation and you want to look for an event for card is activated or not, right? So in this particular part, I've created. activation. So in the journey earlier, I actually used data extension for batch. In this, basically, I actually used the API event. And this kind of says each individual event will trigger the journey. And then actually have the transaction. So I've used Apollo events and configured the events in here, right? So if I open up this, just to show you what's in here. These are all templates or templates. So basically I can go in. I just turned this on for sake of the demo, but this is how you turn on location. So basically I have this particular event template. If I go in here, 
these are all the event templates which is configured by the admin. And if I basically each event template attributes in here, so I go to next, you can configure the attributes based on the event template. If I go in here, I select, say, for sake of it, a different event template, you'll have different attributes in here. These attributes can be configured from the admin GUI itself. And because I turned on location, then it gives me an option where you can select a location, right? And basically, if you go into Singapore, you can select which locations you want for it. Vivo, Orchard, right? And the location information could come from any information data that we have location. It could be ATMs, Wi-Fi, whatever that we have location info across. Just turn this off. And then you have a summary event and then done. So whenever a card gets activated, as we get the data, it triggers a journey. Now to get the data, then the next question is how do we get the data? So part of the Apollo component, you actually have a data management uh, or ETL process, right? So in this, the first thing typically we ask is, how are we gonna get data? What protocol is gonna come in? So depending on the protocol, you can go and configure the adapters required. So data could be given to us in say in a CSV file, you have a file protocol. If you want to come through a Kafka exchange, you have a Kafka exchange configuration, you have HDFS, right? So as long as the data is coming to any of these particular protocols, so web services, it's configurable from the GUI. And this is done from the Marketing Cloud GUI anyway. And once we have the data source configured, or the mapping, this is where the ETL process is. We actually get the required data from the source into the platform. And this directly you map it. Any transformation you want to do for the ETL process, you can create it in here. All right, and you map the data across, and then you have a data mart with fields. And from the fields, we create attributes which call indicator. So typically, assuming someone swipes a credit card, activates, you get a particular transaction. But if you want to say total spend on grocery, then you create derived values in here, and these are created on real time. So as the customer uses, this particular value gets updated in real time. And based on the indicators, this is where we create the events. And if I go back to the event I used earlier, this is the event which I used earlier. And assuming that you want to modify, create new events, I can go to edit. I want to say I got this particular one. I also want to use cut tier as additional part, or maybe credit card limit consumed as one of the part. And I want to use cut tier. And then I can drag and drop. This should be say less than fifty percent. Cut tier should be go. I can save this. And once this is saved. So when I go back to my journey, and let me just drag and drop again. And if I drag the events, and you should get the new attributes in here, right? So there's, there's no coding for you to get any new attributes to be used as part of the journey. You just basically go to admin console, configure it, and you get it in here. So once the event is triggered, again, it goes through a policy. And if it says, okay, true, I should get the message, then in this example, we are giving an offer saying that if you spend more than 500, you get a Starbucks voucher, right? So I need to turn on, I can't activate the offer. So the next step is I'll drag an offer activity, drop it here, and then configure the offer to be tracked. So let me just show you the configuration. So there's three types of offers in here. There's direct fulfill, opt-in, and monitoring. Direct fulfill is basically, it could be someone's birthday, you want to give them a Starbucks voucher for their birthday. They say, happy birthday, here's a voucher. Opt-in offer is where you want to give something, but you want customers to kind of rest, accept it, yes. 
it could be through any channel it could be a link through landing page or email or it could be a sms uh, app push as long as get response back then basically this is an opt-in offer and monitoring of what i'm using here to monitor credit card spend right so these are again these templates as i created the event template all these templates are create are basically configurable from the admin GUI. right it's not hard coded and choose my template of credit card spend then you kind of ask other criteria, like I want to limit these offers only for the first 100,000 customers. I'm going to monitor the offer for 30 days. And if someone taken the offer, I want to say cool down of three days. And then the, the next part is what am I monitoring for this customer? And this again, templates, configure it. You can have different monitoring criteria. In this, I'm going to monitor credit card span. And when I click on this, I get different attributes. If I choose, Something else, say just say mix and spend tracking. I'll get the different attributes in here, right? So this I'm going to track credit card spend. Next, I'm going to say it should be greater or equal to 500. So if the customer meets this criteria, next thing, what products to give? So these are basically the products or rewards. So in this case, I'm giving Starbucks voucher. I think it's supposed to be. 10 bucks, you can have for 10 bucks configured. Yeah, 10 bucks voucher. Right? Voucher. So this is called products. So whatever that you see here, it depends what we integrate to. So by the admin console, we actually have offer. You have the offer template. Another key part is products. So for products, basically, we integrate to the backend platform. It could be a merchant platform, or it could be billing platform, loyalty platform, whatever that we integrate to. This is basically the integration point is the API integration, and then we kind of have parameters we can create the voucher. So this is Starbucks. If assuming that third-party merchant, they got movie tickets, you can create any products that you want as long as the integration API supports the particular product. Then I'm done. Configured, done, right? So product configured. Once this is done, then we are using a push. Message goes out. So when the message goes out, then we start tracking is the customer meeting requirement or not, right? And if assuming the customer have spent five hundred bucks, they give the reward. What we'll do? This particular box will automatically fulfill uh, the Starbucks voucher. But to notify the customer, uh, we've got to use it another journey. So what we typically do, let me just save this. You can have one journey as a notification journey. And in this journey, similar, I'm tracking all fulfillment events. So the event could come externally, and any internal event that we do can be also used as a, as a new journey part of the event. And then as long as transfer start provision, this is a particular journey, these logics are met, then we can send a notification, notification to the customer saying that your reward has been provisioned to your, uh, to your account or given to you already. So the end to end point end to end for this is basically configured from the journey mm -hmm. itself. Should I continue to the next one or do we have any questions we've answered, Nathan? So not looking at the questions. I uh, just answered. Naomi posted a question. I just wrote a wrong one. <laughs> okay. like so I think carry on. I'll take other chats as you're presenting the demo. Okay. And, um, and then I think we can open it up for um, speech at the end. Okay, you want to do the slide the next one for the next simulation campaign? Yeah, I can do this. So, so the um, uh, the next scenario, if you can just make it full screen for me. Yeah, so the next scenario was now to try and uh, move into stimulation. So we, we've posted the card, we've sent a reminder about them getting to activate, they've then activated, and we've set the first challenge to try and get some purchase activity happening. Now, now it's been a little while and we want to uh, start stimulating usage and um, and this is where it gets interesting because actually we can profile it to the individual customer, set challenges down to specific merchants and specific card holding types as well. 
So what we're saying here is that we've got um, Jane, she's got a TSP points plus card. And um, now we're looking for, we're running a promo for um, our spending at a particular merchant in the uh, home and lifestyle um, section category. In this case, uh, there's a purchase of Tangs. And we only want to make this available to uh, card holders that have got a revolver profile and they've got uh, more than or equal to 10% of their remaining credit uh, limit at this point in time. Okay. Um, so, so that becomes our event condition. So Jane, Jane goes into, into a mall, um, or walks into Tangs, she, she makes this purchase. Um, and then we, then we want to present an offer to her uh, to try and get her to spend a bit more on the same day. So complete another purchase at the same merchant today, um, greater than or equal to the purchase value just completed. And then we'll prov uh, provision a 20% uh, rebate immediately after that next purchase that qualifies. So in this case, we, the challenge is un um, unique to Jane um, based on her card holding and the merchant she spent at. And the challenge is getting uh, set at that moment in time based on the previous purchase she just completed. And then the 20% rebate is going to be calculated on the value of the next purchase that she's going to make. Um, so that condition gets set automatically. Um, starts being monitored at that moment in time for Jane. And then um, we're going to push that via app push and EDM again. Um, and if she happens to meet the condition that we sent, we're immediately going to use Apollo to provision her the 20% rebate. Now, when that's done, we need another trigger. And then we use the same notification journey again to notify her of uh, that we've just completed that cash rebate. Okay. Okay. Back to you, so Kamrish. Yes, for the journey, let me go back to this. The simulation journey in here. So similar flow, I have an entry event. Uh, key is the events, looking for a credit card span. So let me just go back. So in this, I use a template called credit card merchant span, which I created from here. Then go next. These are the parameters that you have. So basically based on the campaign, category, customer profile, this revolvers, home thing, and credit card consume less than 90%. So basically this uh, quick track in real time. As the customer spends, this will be updated. And each span, you can actually update the, the indicators of variables. And if the criteria is a man, then this particular event is triggered right, into, the, into the journey. Go through a policy. And then we have an offer for it. So basically this particular offer that you see in here, credit card span, similar concept, a drag and drop offer activity. Mm -hmm. I use the same, because basically I'm checking credit card span, so I can use the same offer template for it. So the idea is you could reuse, even once you create templates, you should be able to reuse most of the templates for most of your journeys. Similar. And what I've done here, I'm actually tracking something different, merchant spend tracking. So in this particular attributes tracks your spend across. And what I'm saying is, as long as the differentiator is say, more than zero or more than $100, whichever value that you want, then the criteria is met and we should give the rewards, right? And then goes in, this is rebate 28% given to the customer. So this particular rebate, again, if you go into the product, it's my rebate. Basically, you use how you calculate the rebate. You can put a formula in here. So this basically, you can put any formula you want to calculate the rebate. So it could be a variable. Based on that, 20% rebate, then the rebate will be given, and then we're done. And the notification part, since I, the first campaign I have a notification flow, it, the same flow can be used. Basically, once the rebate is given to the customer, the notification will go through using the same, same journey flow. And then the last journey that we had was Then you want to do the 
campaign first? Yeah, thanks. Uh -huh. um, so this one, um, we're just going to illustrate the concept of, I guess, location and, and primarily MBO. Um, so just to provide a simple example. So in this case, we've, we've detected a purchase at a, at a particular location. So for this, we would need to have the lat long details for the, the merchants that are in that location. Um, anyway, the, the event triggers, then we've decided within this journey, we've got lots and lots of offers that are potentially available for different types of cardholders at, um, uh, at, at Vivo City. Um, so, uh, so then we've, uh, we want to decide which is the best to, to send, send Jane in this case. In, in this time, it's uh, the 20% off second pair of shoes at Charles and Keith when using her TSV points card. Uh, so just go to the next slide, Kamish. Yeah, so then what you can see here is what we would then get the client to work with us on is um, how to define the MBO offer table, uh, which we're going to use a model to then sort. So there's different variations here. Right? So what is the merchant location? Because we could have different offer catalogs running by different locations. Um, who the different merchants are, uh, the categories. So we could you know, do preferential um, offer selection based on the merchant category. Um, the eligible card, so in this case, Jane's got a specific Points Plus Visa card. Other card holders may have different cards or, or multiple. And so she will only, in this case, qualify for the ones with, that have got Point Plus Visa, which are the ones that you see highlighted in yellow. And then when there's more than one, which is then the most applicable for Jane in that moment in time, and how do we make that decision and, and work out which, which is the prioritization order at this moment when we've triggered um, for, for Jane specifically. And now these offer tables, we've, we've deployed them using up to 10,000 offers to date. Um, some, most customers are running somewhere between 100 and 200 offers we might be sorting, generally using an R or Python model. Um, so the client's own data science team can build these sort of models using the platform, um, using their own tools and just use Apollo for execution or, or we can come in and run consulting services for setting this type of process up. Um, so what Apollo will do, will basically execute the model against the offer table that's been uploaded and do the sorting and then present the offer back to the customer. So that's what um, Kumrish will just quickly run through now in the demo. Create another journey for. And this was the last scenario we had to, by the way, guys. Yeah, so it'd be okay. Again, simulate event. This is the event configuration. So, look at example here. Basically, I actually use the same event I used in the first use case because it's basically tracking uh, transaction time and I turned on location in here, right? So the event also can be reused. And here, basically, I'm looking for activation, I'm looking for spend. So you, basically, depending on data, you can actually have any uh, attributes that you want to check, and you can actually just configure this as you want to. Then, basically, for location, now I'm looking for Vivo, go in here, have all the sites. Okay, for Vivo, I want to add, say, Orchard too, I can just add on. Uh, so. Any merchant spend in Vivo now will get triggered. And then this particular trigger will set the journey on. Now, the other use cases, what we basically did, we dragged our offer in here, put in and configure the offer. But when you have, say, 10,000 offers, you can't have a lot. Even more than five, it gets pretty complicated. So to do that, what we use is basically NBO configuration. Again, same activity. I can drag and drop an NBO activity in here. Click on this. And the first thing is, which model should I run? So I list the models in here. I'm choosing the NBO model. And this NBO model, if I go back to the admin configuration, in here, you have the models. So for a part of the admin, you can just import the models. The model itself is not built on the platform, but once the model is built, you can import it into the platform to execute in real time. So assuming your model is done using Python or R, I go into import model. To import the model and basic, or I can just show you how it looks in here. You click on this, edit. So the model that a lot of imported has been R, uh, Python or PML. Typically if it's a SaaS or SPSS model in PML format, 
or out of Python format across. Once you have chosen the model type, what you need is a source file. This is basically the R file that you have. And once you choose the file, basically then you import the file. And once you import the file, then all the attributes that you need in the model, the way you write it, will appear in here. So these are your search value, maximum usage. Then you have all other attributes you need for the model. It's mapped into the platform. Right? Once this is done, then basically, you select the model that you need, right? So import the model, you select strategy, I wanna cross sell, then the list of activities, offers that you have, right? So I can basically, you can basically load a file. This is my offer file, simple CSV spreadsheet, cross on it. And all the parameters you have here, offer ID merchant code, all these is not hard coded. Depending on what you configure in your model, you can create any of this particular parameter as long as it matches what that you use in your model to call off, right? Of body code, pitch place, of a merchant stuff. And all these are basic dynamic variables. And as you run through the model, assuming that the model select this is the best of the customer, all this value will be sent as a dynamic attribute to marketing cloud. In this, I'm sending an email, uh, push, it could even be an uh, email, and all the selection from that as an M script, it can be used as a dynamic variable in the message or the email they're gonna send out, any other EDM they're gonna send out, or any other channel that you want to send out. So you done, any, any questions? Um turn my video back on. Yeah, Nomi's just uh, posted another question, Kumarish. I was just starting to type a response. So the uh, the question there was, you mentioned either data scientists or yourselves need to come up um, to create the model. So does that take the tool out of the hands of the marketers? Um, basically, I'm asking how easy it is for marketers to create rules or MBO, or wouldn't you recommend it? Um, I think um, I mean, for event triggers and offers, I mean, it's We've designed it very much for marketers to use. For MBO, it's quite a different approach. Um, and yeah, I would say that um, the role of marketers, if you're gonna start taking that approach, changes quite dramatically. Um, instead of marketers creating segments and then attaching an offer to a segment, um, the role of marketing sort of evolves to uh, really defining business logic of how you want a machine to sort hundreds or thousands of potential outcomes and align them to an individual at that moment in time, um, which, which requires then a, a data scientist to, to build and manage that model for you. Um, if it's not changing significantly, the data scientist generally can set up attributes like you saw in the, the demo there. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that is a different approach. Um, and then, then your, your segments are basically the number of customers you've got divided by the number of offers <laughs> uh, each time you're going to engage. So it's a, it is a very different approach. Hopefully that answers the question. Not sure if Nomi's still on actually. Anyway, that's the question. Are there any other questions? I'm quite happy to take any if there's anything. Let me stop sharing and then pass the... Oh, wait, Nida, I think Naomi just posted two more questions to add on to that. I think she also wants to know how long does it take to implement this um, these rules and also to integrate and indeed to how long does it take to implement integrate and secondly to create the models and thirdly for clients to start to feel comfortable with the tool. Okay, so um, it varies depending on what components of Apollo you want to use. I mean, if you're just going to use like the SMS activity or the Apollo uh, contact policy activities, it's quite quick probably around about six weeks for a project. If we start bringing an offer we're, and event triggers, we're gonna be more somewhere in the range of 12 to 16 weeks. Um, and also the adoption, I would say, I mean, if it's everything except MBO, I think the adoption is quite quick. Um, probably four, four to eight weeks after go live, of, you know, some hand holding and knowledge transfer. Um, if it's MBO, then, then it takes a little bit longer, but could just, I think it's more of a, Ment mentality shift than anything else. Uh, from my experience, I would say it's around about 
nine months of really changing the way that you do marketing from segment segment based marketing to letting a machine do the, the decisioning for you. And the, the role of marketing, as I said, changes from working out what the business rules are, but more importantly, working out how to continuously optimize their model strategies. Um, and that's really pro, pro, um, you know, paying a lot of attention to, to your reporting, uh, your offer, offer performance and your strategies, and then sitting down once a week and going through how do we need to optimize these strategies and then you know, offlaying that to a data scientist to make the conflict changes and upload the new model. Cool. Yep. At this point, um, does anyone else have any questions for Nathan or Kumaresh? If not, let's move on to the next section for tonight, which is quiz time. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yep, I'm good. Yep. Are the panelists supposed right. to participate in this as well? Or <laughs> just no. to, to be fair, I don't think we can. <laughs> <laughs> There's prizes to be won. <laughs> yeah, I gather that. Also, I don't yeah, know what the questions so, are. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Nathan and Kuranj for sharing with us on Noesis Apollo and giving us an insight and demo on the product and the platform. I think that was very good and Nathan also managed to answer the questions from our attendees as well. I think those are very good questions and responses. Okay, so now we're proceeding to the next part of the agenda. We do have a quiz prepared for all our attendees and there will be prizes to be won. So thanks for staying on because because you have got the best part here as well. So we, we are doing our quiz using the platform Kahoot. So can all of you go to this website, kahoot.it? And then we do have a, we, there are five questions. Each question, there's a pin for each of the questions. So you can just enter the pin and the fastest fingers wins and make sure it's correct. So now we'll start with our first question. Yeah, so Ben has just posted the pin. So if all of you manage to go to this website, uh, it's available, you can just go to the Safari or website on your mobile phone or desktop and the pin is 39361423 for the first question. 39361423. John, did you want to type, type it in as well? Since <laughs> you have your screen share. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Enter. So it's all about speed and accuracy. Um, all right, so we've got, yeah, do you see your name on screen? Yes, so we've got uh, six, six players uh, so far. Uh, I can see Klee, I can see he, John, SFMC Dude, Naomi, Norman, and Tristy. So six players. Uh, anyone else? I mean, the panelists can join too for the fun of it. Really? <laughs> they wow. are, I want to be a fair player. <laughs> well, you guys don't know the questions. Yeah, that's right. So well, each be... question, they're all, mm, they all individual questions. So each question, you'll win a prize. One prize for it. One question. Yep. Okay, so six players, just six. I'm flashing the player view right now. Do you have a view for mm. like, the entire game? Oh, I've got a view, um, but uh, I, well, once I click start, then we'll s Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I, I've got to share I'm, my I'm screen. showing as if I'm... Yeah, let me, let me unshare. Wait. 
Oh, it's going to be so fun. Now everyone's just rushing to enter the, the answer. This is MCQ, right, Ben? Hmm? It's MCQ, right? What's MCQ? It's multiple choice questions, right? Oh, yeah. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Okay, I don't, I don't know what I'm sharing. How do I know what I'm sharing? Okay, so all the players here, I'll click on start. And uh, as Eileen said, it's, uh, you know, first, first answer. Fastest fingers wins, plus accuracy. All right. Okay, let's start with our first question of the day. Face time. So, what are two things marketers can do to make an email marketing campaign open as, effect, as effective as possible? So, keep the subject line within 50 to 100 characters, no more than 200 words of text, or uh, use images or personalization strings. So, this is about email best practices. For designing an email, we have got our responses. All right. Let's see who's the winner. Clee! Wow, well done, Clee. <laughs> you know, Norman, Norman second. Who so the fastest goes to? Da, 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 da. John! Oh. John! <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> So I think, John, would you like to give the honor to Norman? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, so well done, Norman. You've won the prize. <laughs> well done, John, as well. So Norman, you've won the prize for the first question. So there'll be more details on the prizes after this meetup. We will take it offline and share the details with you. Okay. Yeah, maybe, John, you can also share, give a hint about the prizes. Oh, um, so each of you will be taking home a Trailblazer community notebook for tonight's quiz. Mm. Great, and it's exclusive. Yeah, so let's go to the second question. Okay. Uh, you present oh screen. Yeah, so like because the five questions are all independent from each other, so you you have to enter a new pin for each question. So, so, so like just now our question was on email marketing. So those um it was primarily on what are the best practices for designing an email. So I think some examples include by personalizing your email to make it targeted to your customer segments and also having a very clear and concise subject line. So now let's go to our second question. The pin is Just five. I think since five. this is the question five, no, I think we'll wait for one more. Since the question is about speed, I don't think you'll have time to Google as well. So <laughs> make use of what you know <laughs> to answer the questions. All right, everyone okay, here? Okay, let's start. start? Mm. Okay, the second question is, a business unit in sales source marketing, marketing cloud is, so what's the definition of business unit? So um, this is a little bit more technical, but I think the response might be self-explanatory. A tool to create and manage emails, a means of ensuring email delivery through authentication, a feature to ensure subscriber consent, or a way to manage and share information. Hmm, so let's see. We've got all the responses. Let's look at our winners. So our top three goes to SFMC Dude. 
Second is Naomi. First is is it John? Is it John again? <laughs> Norman. Oh. Wow, well done, Norman. <laughs> well, it seems like there is quite a close fight here. <laughs> okay, great. Well done, Norman. Since Norman, you've won the first prize. Would you like to continue winning the second prize, or would you like to share it with the with our okay. attendees? <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice of you. Okay, so well done, Naomi. You have won the prize for our second question. Yay! <laughs> okay, let's go to our third question. Sorry, so in something about marketing cloud is we do have organized our platform into like parent and child unit. So we do have business unit and business unit we can have our user accounts. Okay, let's go to our third question. The game pin is nine one five five seven eight nine. Nine one five five seven eight nine. Can we join? I mean. <laughs> Mm, great, we've got one more player. Okay, yeah, so I think, it. yeah, that's great. As a general rule, I think it'd be good to not have any um, duplication of the winners. So we'll try to allow Aaron to stand a chance to win the prize. Mm. All right, I'll start now. The third question. What is Salesforce Audience Studio? Hmm, audience studio. What do you think audience refers to? A tool to create personalized social media advertising. A tool to design multi-channel customer journeys. A tool to capture and unify data. A tool for audience discovery, data acquisition, and data provisioning. Hmm, Ready to see the let's see our winners. John and Neil Norman. First goes to Naomi. <laughs> wow, that's great. That's great. <laughs> we 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 see our our top students here now. <laughs> so Ben, do you have any advice on this? <laughs> what advice goes to Christy, right? Christy okay, came can in we see the, the Can we see the list? <laughs> the entire list? Of what? It showed on screen. Christy was oh. four. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, so... So, Naomi and Norman, well done. So, to allow a fair chance, we we'll allow... We have the prize goes to Christy for our third question. Okay, let's go to our fourth question. The pin is one eight two eight one one three. You guys hear anything? One eight two eight one one three. Yeah, some music in the background. Wow, so fun. Seven players. We have seven players now. Fourth question. What are the four Salesforce Marketing Cloud Editions? Mm, you can quickly Google if you don't know. <laughs> Basic Class Family Enterprise. Basic Pro Corporate Enterprise. Beginner Intermediate Advanced Enterprise. Multi-Channel Journey Analytics Integration. The most sense. Well done, Aaron got the correct answer. Mm. 
Mail me. SFMC Duke. The first goes to Trishti. Trishti, well done, Trishti. And we have runner ups Norman and Key. Well done, Trishti. So you have won the prize for the fourth question. Let's go to our fifth question, the last question of the day. So those who have yet to get a prize, try, try out this question and you may have a high chance of winning it. So we do hope that with the questions, you do learn some insights about Marketing Cloud. So about, about the tool and the platform itself. So the fifth question, Ben is preparing, so the pin is 3324015, 3324015. question of the day and the last prize to be won for today's session which of these tools is used to visualize track and manage real-time customer experiences let's see analytics builder journey builder audio studio interaction studio we have previously mentioned audio studio you want to upload our questions just now so, hmm, it's a hint. Analytics Builder, Journey Builder, which Nida has presented, Nida and Kumarish has presented in the demo, or is it Interaction Studio? Oh, it seems like a fair distribution of the responses. So, the answer is Interaction Studio. Let's see our winners. Norman, Kumarish, and the first goes to Jumbo, Jumbo, Naomi, well done, you are an expert. <laughs> well done, Naomi. So, since, since you have won the prize, and we know you are, we all acknowledge you are an expert, <laughs> we'll have Kumarish as the winner of this round. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, well done everyone. I hope you enjoyed the quiz session and you have learned gain some insights on Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So, John, you can maybe share details about how they can collect their prize. Yes, uh, so I believe I know most of you except for Swisty and uh, Eugene. Eugene, are you SFMC dude? So, I will actually need both of you to get in touch <laughs> with me. Uh, so that I can mail over the prizes to you guys in this period. Oh, so Eugene is not. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. SFMC, do you, are, are you <laughs> in here or are you uh, coming in as a guest? Do reach out to me. <laughs> yeah, so how do they reach out? They email you? Yeah. Mm, so, do so, send me your, yeah, your address and details to John. Yep, uh, feel free to, to just email me and I'll get in touch with you guys. Mm. You guys you guys have won real prizes, so the quizzes <laughs> weren't just Yeah, uh, this yeah. is real. It's not, not a scam. Thanks, this guys. Is <laughs> <laughs> it's real prizes to be won and it's yeah, so do share details after this. We'll take it offline, but do remember to follow up with John to collect our prizes. Yeah. Oh, it's Shibu. Okay. Great. So uh, I'll get in touch with you guys. And thanks, Eiling and Ben, for taking us through the quiz. We've come to the end. And since it's the first time we're doing a virtual meetup, 
we have um, taken the effort to create a meetup feedback form. So we really appreciate if you guys could fill that up and let us know uh, certain things like uh, your satisfaction and also what are some um, content areas you wish for us to be focusing on next time. This will really be helpful to us. And with that, we have come to the end of our first ever virtual session. So thank you everyone once again um, for sparing uh, some time from your evening today uh, in joining us. And we really hope to organize uh, our subsequent sessions, um, hopefully not virtually, so that we can see each other uh, in real life. Thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nathan and Kumaresh. Yeah, thanks all, guys. Thank Have you. Amazing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye.